come on, tech work. All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Zenny 62 on Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day uh, to everybody. And um, without any further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce the Council on the Oakland Vulcan Oversized Terminal Project, David Smith. Dave, welcome. How are you? Did I get that right? You did, Zane. Thank you. Shocking. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate that you're here. Hey, tell my viewers what the situation is uh, that prompted the letter from you to the city of Oakland regarding the uh, Oakland Army base lease, and then, of course, the city's subsequent action to ostensibly terminate the lease. Well, there's been some confusion. There's been no termination of the lease. Uh, we sent a letter last week, October 19th, articulating our contention as to multiple ways in which the city's affirmative conduct or failure to perform mandatory obligations under the lease has thwarted the project from going forward. Let's not forget the city's already been ordered by a federal district court out of San Francisco that its prior actions to date with regard to the terminal are illegal and in violation of its agreement with the developer. Since then, we have made multiple efforts to try to get the project back on track. We've made offers to the city, requests to meet, requests for phone calls. Previously, the project team would meet weekly with the city. Sometimes those meetings were productive, sometimes not so much. But the city unilaterally several weeks ago just decided to terminate those meetings and they've never been reestablished. Uh, we've asked for them to be reestablished and they've said no. Hmm. Um, if I may, do they, give a, do they give please. a reason? Did they give a no. reason? No. We ask for the notice of the meeting to be set when and where, and they say there won't be the meeting. Um, and this and this is just, we believe, Zenny, and we're, we're, we're getting growing more and more concerned that, in fact, the actual facts on the ground, the offers of settlement, the material terms of settlement that the project have made are not actually making their way up to the council members. Hmm. We think if the council members themselves knew the exact status of what was going on, what we proposed, I'm not sure we ever would have gotten to this point. And we also think it's the path forward to get it back on track moving forward. Mm -hmm. But it, we are gravely concerned. And the more we try to engage, the more that concern about the lack of communication up from the staff and city attorney's office, frankly, to the council members themselves, is part of the issue potentially? Are you? Are you? Um, is it that? Who's the main point of contact that you've been working with that is responsible for this? If I may ask. You know, right now we're not even sure. Everybody, it, it's almost as if they've pulled staff off of it. We had regular points of contact, and now it's all it seems to have devolved just to the attorneys which is never a good thing for progress on a project. When we, when we sent our letter on the 19th, as you've seen, 51 mm -hmm. pages mm -hmm. of, of concerns, mm -hmm. um, that was a last resort. We, we don't want a lawsuit. We, 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 there's a lawsuit already underway in which the city lost miserably. And if you read the opinion, 37 pages of just how patently absurd the city's prior actions were, mm -hmm. Uh, and yet, in fairness, I'll acknowledge they have that up on appeal on the Ninth Circuit, and we'll see where that goes. But the concerns articulated in our current letter are relate to their conduct relative to the ground lease. The last lawsuit was about the development agreement. I don't want to get all lawyerly particular. I can feel free to ask whatever you want, but I don't want to. Sure, to sure, sure. Hey, I'm curious though. Uh, clarify for my viewers that the city did indeed know and was aware as I have made a point of explaining time and again, that the facility was to handle coal. So there was never a particular commitment one way or the other. What was made abundantly right. clear and has remained is the facility needs to be able to move whatever the market is demanding in that day. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the, 
the agreements were being entered into in 2012 and 2013, coal was 35 to 45% of the market of the bulk commodities being shipped globally. It was no uh, secret to anybody. The city was provided pie charts of what's being sent. They were provided videos of facilities from which this was patterned showing coal, among other commodities, right. being shipped. And most recently, then, we found, and I wish we had seen this earlier, there was a comprehensive report. As you know, the project took hundreds of millions in state money. Mm -hmm. For that, the, the city took hundreds of millions in state money to support the project. In, in the obligations that go along with that are a lot of reporting and assurances. There's a city report compiled by the city's own attorney on the city attorney's letterhead. Keep, keep going, report, ignore that. <laughs> with reports on city letterhead, talking about various assurances, how they're complying with the terms of the grant. Mm -hmm. One of those reports is called a long range property management plan. Right. In that plan, they describe what's to be built out on the parcel, a bulk commodity terminal. And in the city's own language says, Bulk commodity terminals ship things like lumber, coal, and sulfur. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this, we also learned that the city in 2012 commissioned a report from a company called the Tioga Group to assess the market viability of a facility like this. And in the conclusion of that report, Tioga basically concludes that the success will hinge on the ability to land a single tenant that needs to move those types of commodities and says that during that period of time they were only aware of one commodity that commanded the market that drastically and that commodity was coal mm -hmm. interestingly we knew of that report we asked the city for that report repeatedly and it w and they denied that it ever existed and it wasn't until they were forced to produce it in the context of a subpoena wow that we found the preliminary report I'm curious, why doesn't the city offer an alternative, viable land use within the parameters that were set decades ago and a company that would pay a California Capital Group and uh, Oakland Bulk and Oversized Terminal Group to establish a facility? I mean, I don't, I don't get the city's logic, or is there a logic? I, I'm with, I don't know. Uh, they just said, all we keep hearing is the term ban compliant facility. Mm -hmm. You need to produce a ban compliant facility. Well, again, the federal court ruled that the ban is illegal. Mm -hmm. And that ruling stands. It, yes, it's on appeal, but the, the opinion's not vacated during the pendency of the appeal. And we don't know in this market what that is. With that band compliant, okay, you're taking one of the dominant commodities on the world market off. Okay, what is going to be the politically disfavored commodity two years from now, mm -hmm. five years from now, mm -hmm. ten years from now? Mm -hmm. The commitments to make this a viable use require the investment of tens of millions of dollars up front and a decades-long commitment to if the future use is subject to the political winds of any jurisdiction, let alone the city of Oakland, what does that say about the legitimacy of investing in the first place? It's a great point. I, you know, economic development aside for a second and, and legal procedure front and center, uh, one would think that the city would be quite interested in following a line and working with you that doesn't get them into legal trouble. Um, am I wrong? Well, I mean, again, you'd have to ask them, but that's part of our concern that we, we do believe there are folks at the city with that genuine concern. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just fearful that the true facts, the true potential pathways forward being offered are not being communicated at all levels. We just don't have the meaningful engagement of the decision makers at the city, which is the city council. Mm -hmm. and, and we just, the indicators to us are that they don't have the full context to which they can make informed judgments and reactions. Hey, for someone who 
may be hearing this for the first time who is a new council member. Can you explain to them how the situation arise in your words? Sure, I'll try to I'll try to be succinct. Back in 2012 and 2013, the project, after a long history before that, which everybody can read about, um, the city accepted the proposal for a logistics terminal here. The beauty of this, and this promise remains, not just jobs and economic activity, but the promise of this was the unique circumstance of Oakland being a deep water port with immediate proximity to existing rail lines. What that means is we can get those diesel emissions spewing 18 wheelers off of the streets of West Oakland for once and start transporting stuff via rail, which has far less emissions and doesn't clog up the streets. And that was the beauty of this, and that was what was pitched to the state of California, why everybody rallied around it. Every, every jurisdictional level supported this project, the transportation, the California Transportation Commission, the Department of Transportation, city, um, BCDC. It had to be signed off on a multiple agencies, and there's still a ways to go. But what was approved, to get to your point, I apologize, to get to your point, was what was approved was a bulk commodity terminal. Mm -hmm. And what a bulk commodity terminal does is ship whatever commodity, the legal commodity, the market is demanding at the time. The analysis at the time when it was approved was to ensure that this would be a facility that could implement whatever safety measures would be required for whatever commodity was proposed to be shipped. There are thousands and thousands of potential commodities. You don't, under CEQA or any other law, evaluate a maybe thousands and thousands of times over you evaluate whether the facility can be built and permitted in a safe way to address whatever it'll ship and that's what happened and there was a development agreement signed which got the city extra goodies from the developer and got the developer vested rights that could not be revoked and except in the narrowest of circumstances and when the city went politically negative at the thought of coal with the support of the Sierra Club, they tried mightily to fit into that little narrow circumstance and the judge saw it for what it was and that's what they lost in the federal court that they couldn't do. And so as we tried to proceed forward since that under the terms of the ground lease, that's what our current letter objects to is all the conduct of the city refusing to engage, refusing to have meetings, refusing to discuss the project, unless as a threshold matter, again, it is a ban compliant facility. Does the city ever spell out what defines ban compliant? But again, you'd have to ask the city. Ask them. Okay. I mean, start with wow. the face of the ban, which is what the federal court said was illegal. Mm -hmm. But we also know right behind that, that, that just addressed coal and pet coke, but then you add in all other fossil fuels. And again, what other politically disfavored commodities out there in the market are they going to have a problem with? No. I'm curious, what about these reports, this uh, idea the city has terminated the lease? Because uh, I couldn't get, I didn't get a press release on that from the city. I called from him. He's a city uh, chief, of, chief of staff for city attorney Barbara Parker. Uh, what's happening here from your point of view? Did you get a letter or something? So we sent our letter on the 19th, this letter that we keep talking about, and it's out there. I think I saw a post from you earlier, which made it available. And so it's anyone should be able to get to it. Yeah. Um, Shortly after we sent that late letter, the city issued to us a formal notice of default mm -hmm. under the lease. Um, it's that letter that's been referenced in at least one press report claiming the lease has been terminated. And frankly, that's just wrong, factually wrong. Uh, the notice of default does invoke provisions of the lease which starts some 30 day time frames ticking. Well, in the midst of all this, we certainly contend that there has been no act of default. So you have no clock ticking and there's no issue of termination, but even under the city attorney's letter, which is dated October 23rd and was referenced in this particular story, 
even on the face of it, it does not claim to be terminating the lease. It mm -hmm. just references other provisions of the lease and some time frames. So basically they wrote a, uh, a legally incorrect letter that's designed to scare you? Well, uh, I, I think in fair, the letter makes a contention of default, which we vigorously dispute. Mm -hmm. There has been a press report since in which city attorney Parker was quoted and that press claims the lease has been terminated and that is factually incorrect and it's facially inconsistent with the letter we received from the city. So no. What's the next step? We hope that we can get through to better thinking minds at the city, that there is a path forward, that there's a productive future for the facility that will benefit everyone involved and that we can get this thing back on track. If that doesn't happen and we're forced to confront assertions of default by the city formally, we most certainly will do that in court and counter that in court. And, and as that 51 page letter lays out, we think the facts overwhelmingly demonstrate that any notion of a surreptitious claim of default and termination is just laughable, absolutely hey, laughable. I'm curious, has anyone connected with the city or affiliated with the city given any kind of idea or desired directive regarding how they want to see the land used as opposed to something called, you know, as opposed to uh, the current and approved proposed Oakland, Oakland oversized terminal? Have they, has anyone ever said anything? I haven't heard a thing. And in fact, the initial impetus, as I was saying earlier, the initial vision and impetus for this of combining the deep water port with the proximity of rail to actually reduce emissions and get trucks off the streets. Who wouldn't love that right mm -hmm. now? It's only, again, this advent since the 2012 council took its binding action by ordinance, it was 2013 actually, and bound the city to a vested right to this terminal that for absolutely political reasons, the later council changed their mind. Well, you don't get to just change your mind. Mm -hmm. And again, this isn't a, one of the things that the city attorney said in that last article, this isn't about coal. I, I agree with about that for different reasons. I don't think it's what she meant, but I agree. It is about a viable facility operating on Oakland's, working waterfront for the benefit of the community, for the benefit of the environment, for the benefit of jobs. And as the market sorts out what is and isn't an appropriate demand for a commodity, the, the market will speak to that. And mm -hmm. the facility will continue to ship the appropriate thing based on, again, market forces, not politics. You know what? I, I just have to observe as a person with a economic development background, it seems like the city has forgotten how to do economic development and only knows how to use the law to essentially do the economic or make the kind of economic development decisions that past city administrations have, have made. Um, I, you know, I, I, what are your thoughts about that? Am I right or am I wrong? Well, it's just personally my opinion. I, I guess I would phrase it differently. You said they've forgotten how to do economic development very smart people at the city, very, very knowledgeable and informed people at the city. I don't think this was forgetting or, or ignorance or oversight. I think it was a very conscious choice and decision to elevate a political policy over a legally binding ordinance commitment mm -hmm. and economic development. Well, that begs the question, when did the shift in thinking happen from your point of view? Again, not being an insider at the city, I, I can't tell you. We just responded in real time as the as a very open and vigorous campaign mm -hmm. um, mounted. And I asked not to let me explain where I'm coming from, so I don't I'm not perceived as trying to move your your thoughts or comment one way or the other. I'm not. Um, I recall in 2014 the rise of the um, I call them money activists um, who 
first attacked a uh, similar issue in Portland, and then it seemed to spread down through the West Coast into Oakland. And around that time, it, it quite literally seemed like there was a seismic shift in the direction of development of the Oakland Army base. But uh, as adjunctly related to that seismic shift was this idea that, oh, we didn't know the Oakland Vulcan oversized terminal was to handle commodities, iron ore, core, and so on. And, and some of the people who said that were actually at the groundbreaking <laughs> for Oakland Global. Uh, and I was there and I have them on video, right? So that's why I asked that question. It seems like there's a, an untold story here of the genesis of this political change and who, who started it and how the city was really impacted by it, um, however that was. I don't know how it was, you know. Well, I, I guess I just add I mean, that the documentary record now is irrefutable that at the time the city made its decision, the record was more than solid and complete. And in the city's own words and summaries of the project, knew what, what the market, the majority of the market was moving mm -hmm. at that point in time. Um, so as we sit here today in the face of those denials, it, it would seem it's one of two things. Either people who were there at the time did not do their homework and understand what they were approving or they're intentionally today changing their story. Fascinating. Way out of respect for your time. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, uh, I want to respect your time. I don't know how much more time you have. So um. I, I just think we've squandered enough on lawyers. It's time to get the project back on track. Um, the city already took a hit with the federal lawsuit. We'll see what happens with its appeal. Um, the current lawsuit if if it needs to proceed to litigation will we'll be very different in that there's an attorney's fees clause in the lease so the whoever uh, fails to uh, prevail in that will be paying the other side's fees uh, which which makes it a little more real um again we just don't but we don't want to get there we want the tro project back on track for the benefit of all the stakeholders involved hey Thanks a lot. And I'm going to come back to you later if that's okay. Absolutely. All right. Happy to talk. Okay. I right, see you. Bye-bye. Well, folks, that's it. And uh, we'll be back for more. Please subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube. And please bookmark Oakland News Online.